And greetings. Happy Tuesday. No, Wednesday. The days, I mean, when you're having this much fun, the days, they just run together. I am Steve Dace. How are all of you? Todd Erzin and Aaron McIntyre, they are here with me as well. The days are so uncertain right now and so nuts. I have no idea if Daniel Horowitz, our weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, is going to join us or not. His schedule, even his schedule is up in the air. And you know, Daniel is nothing if not meticulous. So even he does not know his schedule. So I don't know if he's joining us later. He may join us in the overtime. He may join us not at all. And you know, I have like no tolerance for if I don't know everything that's going on in the show, because I got to wing it already with what I think. So everything, everything else, just so you guys know how the show works here. Every, every opinion we give is off the cuff. None of it's scripted. None of it's written out. There are no teleprompters. Everything is off the top of our heads. Everything else though, about when things happen in the show is all very regimented. I have like no tolerance at all. I mean, I've had like names you would know and Aaron's like, they can't be on. Okay. Then they won't be on. Then they call like in the middle of a segment. What is always my answer? We don't, no, they, they, I'm, I'm not changing up. I'm even willing to let Daniel float because that, I don't think the audience understands. You guys know working with me here the last five years. That's a big step for me. Right, well, to sum up, remember Pete Buttigieg? <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember when Bernie Sanders was inevitable? Remember that? That's your point about all this. A lot it, has changed exactly. in a very so, short time. You're going to find out what's going on in this show about the same time I do. I, I know this. We will start by seller hold uh, in this program. That will happen. Okay. Um, and we will find out right now, in fact, what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by the ones who lost their lives. Patrick Underwood was the first individual to be killed by the violent looters and rioters who have gripped the nation in the past week. Underwood was a 53-year-old Federal Protective Service officer who was shot and killed on duty amid protests in Oakland, California last week. An Iowa woman named Italia Marie Kelly was shot and killed by rioters in Davenport, Iowa during riots and looting earlier this week. She was 22 years old. Her sister took to social media to voice her outrage. My sister is gone, and it's not from a cop. It wasn't from no cop. I don't get on live, and I don't care about this Facebook shit. But my sister is gone because one of you, a protester, shot my sister. A protester, not even the police, because you guys, I lost my sister. I lost my sister because you... You, you're so mad at the police. You're hurting everyone else. You're so mad at the police. You guys killed my sister. The third victim of the rioters was retired St. Louis, Missouri police captain David Dorn. The 77-year-old who attempted to stop looters from ransacking a pawn shop when he was shot. Come on, OG. Come on, OG. Stay with me. Come on, OG. Come on, OG. Come on, OG. Come on, OG. Damn, man. With some TVs, cars. I was some TVs, man. For real. That's somebody granddaddy cuss. Man, f you, n Two people were shot and killed in Cicero, Illinois by rioters, one of which was Victor Cesaris, a 27-year-old. It's unclear if these two individuals were involved with the rioting and looting. An anonymous woman who police say showed signs of visible trauma was found in a car in Minneapolis late last week. Rioting in Indianapolis left three people dead after multiple shootings, according to police. Among those dead was former Indiana Hoosiers football player Chris Beattie. A 23-year-old man in Philadelphia Philadelphia was shot 15 times amid riots there. A Las Vegas Metro police officer was shot in the head by an illegal alien rioter and is in grave condition. The list of those injured is even longer, including this female police officer from New York who was heckled by rioters as she sat on the pavement after being injured. Doesn't feel so good seeing people Remember in the this! Remember how it feels! You still have your life! CNN, your thoughts. And please, Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. In other news, brainwashing seems to be the latest riot fad. What we're watching is a large crowd of white people sitting prostrate with their hands in the air repeating a mantra. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. And do everything in my power to educate my community. And do everything in my power to educate my community. 
Hospital staff in New York City wearing their full array of personal protective equipment came out and cheered and thanked the rioters and protesters. And then there's this from Black Lives Matters. Excuse me. Hey, excuse me. I work for Black Lives Matter. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I work for Black Lives Matter. I'm sorry that I scared you. But since I work for that company, my CEO has told me to come out today and to bring you on your knees because you have white privilege. So if they see that a white person is getting on their knees, that shows solidarity for the situation. The situation... And could you just please apologize for, you know, for your white privilege? Just apologize? I am. I'm trying to think of the right words to say because that's a, that's a big thing to say. It's, it's big. It comes from... It's, so, it's large in this country. I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly sorry about that. You know, with this country, we have that President Donald Duck, that clown in office. You know, he's brought a lot of bigotry and you're not a part of it, right? No. Exactly. No. And so, you know... Thank Just you for you have a Okay, you have a great day. New York City faced another night of unrest and looting, so naturally, Mayor Bill de Blasio dispatched the police to a Hasidic community in Brooklyn to warn them not to pray together because of Wuhan coronavirus. When you see a nation, an entire nation, simultaneously grappling with an extraordinary crisis seated in 400 years of American racism? I'm sorry, that is not the same question as the, the devout religious person who wants to go back to services. And finally, you're all for the rioters until they throw a brick through your window. Why are you... And that's what happened while we were away. Aaron's Montage brought to you by Patriot Mobile. Uh, they are doing their part uh, to help as many people as they can during this crisis, which is why they're lowering their prices even further. Right now, their U.S.-based team is standing by to design your customized plan family plan starting as low as $25 a month. Patreon Mobile shares your values. They will never charge you hidden fees like the big boys try to get away with. And unlike those big boys as well, they won't send your hard-earned money to some of the fools that you just saw in Aaron's montage a moment ago. All right. Uh, get the same reliable nationwide service and support a company that shares your values, uh, supports our constitution and puts people before profits. Switching is easy to keep your phone number, bring your own phone or buy a new one right now. When you join their family of freedom-loving Americans, get free activation and a free gift. Free activation and a free gift with the offer code Steve. That's 972-PATRIOT is the number. 972-PATRIOT. Use the offer code Steve when you call in. You'll get a free activation and a free gift on top of their lowest rates ever. Or, if this is easier, go to the website. Uh, PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. Exact same offer, lowest rates, free activation, and a free gift at patriotmobile.com slash Steve. Steve at stevedace.com is how you can email us. That's D-E-A-C-E. -E. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Dace Show. And the last name is D-E-A-C-E. -E. And youtube.com slash Steve Dace is where you can go. Uh, to get samples of this show that you can check out yourself and then share with others. Let's get some reaction to Aaron's montage. And I, I don't know. I don't know how you can't be angry. At least a little bit. At least a little bit at that. And, you know, there's... There's a lot of people urging prayer for our nation right now, for healing and for unity. And I, I, think, I think those things are all very important. And I'm going to assume the best of all those that are calling for those things. But I also don't think it's sufficient. See, you don't get, 
you don't get to a resurrection Sunday without a good Friday. The, the God that brings healing demands justice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What does it mean to give his son? That he offered him up as a ransom for you and me. That he would suffer what you and I deserve to suffer. And suffering doesn't mean he couldn't go to the movies for three months. Suffering doesn't mean, hey, only season ticket holders get to go see my favorite football team this fall because of social distancing. My gym wasn't open. I couldn't go. I, you know, I had to go to a back alley barber. That's not the kind of suffering that was done here. It was tortured. Tortured beyond recognition and then left to asphyxiate and bleed out on a tree in broad daylight after that torture. That's what it means to give. That's what it means to be offered up as a ransom. Do not trifle with your sentimentalities and the God of this universe. Do not. Because if you think he's going to bring healing to your land without confronting that injustice in your streets, you're reading a different Bible than me. See, you need to also be praying, in my opinion, that the government would do its job. It has a divine job here. And that is to bring a sword of righteousness, to be an avenging angel against the injustice going on in our streets, against those who have also, like George Floyd, been unjustly killed, the names that Aaron just gave you. They deserve and demand justice as well. Who's praying for that? If you brought that to your pastor and said, Pastor, would you join me in praying that, the, that our government would stop these riots? They would do what Romans 13 commands them to do? And if your pastor wouldn't do that, you're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong church. Get out. Go somewhere else. I don't care if your kids were married there. You're wasting your time. United Way demands less money from you and you'll get the same amount of Bible from them. Enough pussyfooting around. Enough. It is freaking hammer time. Is this for real or not? Is it an exercise or not? Because I'll tell you what, those people, those, those thugs out in the streets, at night doing those riots, they're very real. Very. Those dead bodies you just took a look at in Aaron's montage, all very real. The Black grieving, dead bodies. Yes. The grieving you just saw in Aaron's montage, all very real. It's all very real. Sentimentality. I won't, I won't post on my Facebook page yesterday. Get out of here with that, man. Get out. Just get out with that. Okay? Get out of here. I agree that black lives matter. I'm not even really offended at the phrase. I mean, I understand that all lives matter. But let me give you an analogy. You guys know I love my football, right? Yep. If a coach stands up there at his press conference and talks about, hey, I really think the key to this game on Saturday is going to be our, our special teams. If we're not sound in the kicking game, we're not going to win. Does that mean he doesn't, that he automatically thinks offense and defense doesn't matter? Is that, what, is, is that the implication he is making by singling out the importance that this particular unit has in this game? No. But he could be wrong about emphasizing it. He though. could be. He could be. He could be. But, but I'm, I'm willing to not immediately prejudge people the way that many of them would like to prejudge me because that same God commands me not to do that, to love my neighbor as I love myself. And I wouldn't want somebody to prejudge me, so I'm not going to prejudge them. But I have questions. If I agree with you that black lives matter, and if I even agree with you, and the data says this is true, that blacks have a disproportionate amount of violence, suffer a disproportionate amount of violence and homicide in our culture, and a longer or a shorter standard of living. If I agree with you on that, I need to make sure you agree with me on that then. 
because the amount of people, the amount of black people Planned Parenthood has killed compared to every racist or allegedly racist cop in the history of this country, it's not even close. Why aren't you marching in front of them? They were still killing black children while the rest of the country was in a lockdown. Nobody has murdered more people that look like Black Lives Matters than Planned Parenthood has. So why aren't you marching in front of them? In between allegedly racist cops targeting black people and killing them, would we still have 20... 20 incidents of gun death over the weekend in Chicago this past weekend. Or was it 22, something like that? Yeah. The amount of violence that goes on in our inner cities, most of it black on black violence, black on black crime, black on black homicide, just tragically sad. So in between standing around waiting for a racist cop to put his knee to a man's neck and, and, and choke him to death in the broad daylight in Minneapolis, in between that happening, all those other nights in Chicago, in Houston, in Detroit, in Compton, in Los Angeles, in Long Beach, in Seattle, in Miami, in New York. Where, where are you all those other nights? See, when I, when I, here's what I need to know. I, I need to know if Black Lives Matters or leftist political dogma matters. Which is it? I mean, that video, you, the ridiculous video accosting the white woman out on the street, which I think the whole, that whole thing was staged, by the way. Okay? But let's just say that it wasn't. So we didn't have allegedly white racist cops targeting black people until Donald Trump became president? This wasn't an issue before then? This wasn't a central theme in a movie called Boys in the Hood, which is almost 30 years old now? It just started in, 20, in January of 2017 when Donald Trump took the oath of office. Michael Brown occurred on Barack Obama's watch. And it was Barack Obama's Department of Justice that investigated that. Eric Holder himself, America's first black attorney general, investigated that himself. And found that hands up, don't shoot never happened. That was his report. I don't know if it happened or not. I wasn't there. I'm not the attorney general. Eric Holder was. He determined it didn't happen. So, so what is the, what, what's the goal here? Or is the agenda the goal? Because if black lives matter, if they truly matter, and if it is truly worthy to single out their importance, given how sadly the stats show they're singled out when it comes to mortality in numerous other facets of our culture. How come we're only addressing this one? According to the Washington Post, 17 black Americans were killed by police, I believe it was in 2018. According to their database. Planned Parenthood cuts through that many by lunchtime on a Tuesday. Where's, where's the justice for those children, those black children whose potential was never, ever tapped or accessed, who never got to take a breath outside their mom's womb? Where's the march for them? The amount of young black men with all that untapped potential who are going to commit acts of violence against other young black men who are going to kill other black young black men. I, I agree with you. Probably hard for a white kid from the suburbs to go down into Compton and, and, you know, without a specific mandate from the Holy Spirit himself and have much success bringing different facets and factions of people within that subculture together. I, I agree. But you look like them. Why aren't you there? Where's Black Lives Matters? And maybe they are, I don't know, but do you ever, I would think if they were mediating disputes in the inner city, if they were calming the violence that goes on there, 
in America, don't you think we'd be hearing about it? I haven't heard Don Lemon say as much. I, I just, how come we only hear about it in this one context? The religious cult aspect of this, with all of those white people with their ridiculous hands up, Somewhere in hell, the devil's like, damn, I'm just going to take today off. You guys got this. Let me see what's going on elsewhere in the world today. You don't need me. Hell, I might, I might be out of a job here soon. Fools, one and all. And the video of those white kids completely worked over while playing beer pong who think that if they grab their phones from their posh apartment and give a thumbs up, a, a note of solidarity, a fist in the air, they will have done their virtue signal today and the brick comes through not one but two windows. That'll preach right there. That will preach right there. So I'm I'm I am one conservative who is I'm I'm fine with signing up for Black Lives Matters. What I want to know is whether you think Black Lives Matter or not. Because there's a lot of context in this culture where black lives are more imperiled than by police officers. That doesn't excuse what goes on in these cases and they should all be adjudicated in it. Officer, is it Chauvin? Is that his name in Minneapolis? I believe If so. he gets a fair trial and there's no other exculpatory evidence because we haven't seen any so far, I'm fine if you give him the death penalty. I don't care. I'm totally okay with it. I'm fine making an example out of him provided he gets a fair trial. I'm totally fine with it. But what I, what, what, what I need to understand is how come it only seems to matter in this context? The black survival rate at a Planned Parenthood clinic is far lower. I can promise you that. And the tragic truth is, young black males have a better chance interacting with the American police departments in many cities in America than even a lot of other young black males. And that's just what the data says. So do black lives matter or not? That's my question today. Or when do they matter? It's like this, it's like this is the same conversation with the virus, isn't it? Yeah. It's like the same conversation. Tell me why I can get infected if I go, if, if, if I go to the local deli but I, I can't get infected. The local deli couldn't possibly with, with a, in a smaller building with less customers couldn't possibly figure out how to mark off six feet to social distance. Couldn't possibly figure that out. But on a massive Lowe's campus and a massive Home Depot campus with hundreds of people potentially there, they seemingly can or Walmart or Target. How come I can, how come I can't get it there? And, and where were all the Walmart Target workers, why aren't they like literally populating your hospitals all over America because of COVID-19? But yet, if, you, if, if you're Christian or Jewish and you want to have a church service, somehow everyone there will be infected, but not everybody at the full lot at the lows. Same argument here. I totally agree with you. We, should have, we need to confront what is going on within black America 10 years ago. I spent a good deal of my career early on trying to do exactly that, by the way. So I also know, I, see, I, I know, I know when I'm being grifted. That's, you cannot white guilt me, number one. I, I mean, I grew up white trash. So you can't white guilt me on that front. You can't. 
Number two, I promise you I have spoken in more pulpits of predominantly black churches than the vast majority of white America has, regardless of their political beliefs. I've attended far more church services with people who don't look like me than the vast majority of white America has, regardless of whether they want to vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump this fall or not. I promise you that's true. So you're not going to grift me on this. You're not. I need to know when do black lives matter? Because I'm totally willing to go to war for that. The data has been clear in this country for decades. The disproportionate amount of crime, the disproportionate amount of mortality, the disproportionate amount of illiteracy, it's unacceptable. But how come 90% of the black kids in the Detroit public schools, according to our own education department, are not reading and math efficient, proficient, I should say. Why don't their black lives matter? All that wasted potential. Where's the marches for them? Or is it because they are in a school district that's been controlled by Democrats and many of them black for decades? That's not the agenda. What is the agenda? This is me calling you out. I'm calling your bluff. Because if we're truly going to go where black lives are disproportionately imperiled in front of, hey, hey, I'll, I'll join you in front of the police station, provided we go right down the street to the Planned Parenthood on every Martin Luther King Drive in America. All right? If we're going down the street, I'm there. I'll go to both places. Will you? That's my question. Will you? So is it black lives matter or is it Marxism and anarchy matters? Which is it? So this is me calling you out, calling your bluff. You tell me, are we really going to go everywhere where black lives matter? Are we going to march on every school board in every urban area in America and ask, what the hell have you people been doing all these decades? So do black lives matter or does anarchy and Marxism matter? Which is it? Gentlemen, your thoughts. Well, if black lives matter, they matter because they're lives, not because they're black. And so we need to talk about the things that make lives matter. Steve is pointing to that. Fatherlessness is an issue general lies about the state of what it means to be free versus to be a slave listen we're not going to learn any lessons though right now until we realize something there's no the chaos is not going to make people pause when the chaos is validating the lies they've been telling themselves for so long Transgenderism, lockdowns, race riots, they, 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 they're getting what they want. They love it. We are a failed state because of it. That thinking we're going to just clear the fog out is not, that, that was back then. We're way past it. The horses left that barn. It, we are the, the Venn diagram. Absolutely no overlap. Not only no overlap now, just smashing. In, well, one side smashing into one, the other. The other side just sitting there like dummies and taking it. Listen to the experts. Which ones? Listen to the experience of your black neighbors. Which ones? Black lives matter. Which ones? There's a common theme there. There are two answers to that question. Neither of them are good. More in a moment. Hi, Seller Hold, brought to you by Rough Greens. Here's something you may not know about your dog's food, similar to what happens to our own. All the real uh, rich and nutrient stuff, the good for you stuff is stripped out of that dry dog food for the same reason it's stripped out of a lot of ours too because they want mass consumption long shelf life therefore all those digestive enzymes probiotics prebiotics you know we got all these food allergies these days maybe one of the reasons why is we take all the prebiotics and probiotics out of a lot of our food 
and one of the largest, maybe the largest um, immunity system in the entire body is in the gut. Same thing goes on with our with our dogs as well. And that's where Rough Greens Vitasmart comes in. It is not a new dog food. It's a premium dog food supplement. You just sprinkle it over your dog's existing food. Apparently it tastes great too, because our dog Cap absolutely loves it. And all of those vitamins, nutrients, even omega oils, antioxidants, everything missing from your dog's dry food suddenly goes back in, courtesy of Rough Greens Vitasmart. If you want to see uh, your dog thrive once more, take the 14-day challenge from Rough Greens for just $14.95. It's just $14.95 to take the Rough Greens Vitasmart 14-day challenge, and you can take advantage of that at roughgreens.com slash blaze. It's R-U-F-F is how it's spelled, by the way. Roughgreens.com slash blaze. Let's get to buy, sell, or hold. Aaron, with a little help from, well, a lot of help from all of you in the audience, we'll be throwing at Todd and I a series of predictions, propositions, premises, et cetera, prophecies even uh, on numerous different topics. Todd and I will then decide, are we buying that? Are we selling that? If you're all lucky, we might only have one good reason why, or in my case, 46. And then once per show, we are permitted to put a hold on one of your propositions, but if it's for any reason other than, wow, you are so dumb, for real then we will be, uh, we will suffer at the uh, long arm of the law uh, known as the dude code. Aaron. All right. Constantinos Roditis says, besides rhetoric about Antifa, the Trump administration will not do anything substantive to go after them. This has been a really uplifting and encouraging start to the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm about to quit. You know, I, I, I don't have to worry about getting fired today. I'm about to hit the eject. I mean, wow. Todd, you go first. <laughs> I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell. Actually, I think they actually are going to do something. Todd, you, you go You'll first. You'll hear about arrests. You go. Okay. Um, I just so badly want to buy. Every every fiber of my being needs to buy. Um, Aaron, I'll, put his put his question back up there. The exact wording, if you would. Let's define substantive. What is it? Because let's face it, there is a portion of our base that him tweeting that they're, we're, we're going to consider them a domestic terrorist group. That's all the substance they want. Let's just be honest about that, right? Right? Yeah. We know that. We've learned there's a there's a there's a there's a mass portion of our base that just wants the cheese. It's they 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 just want the clicks. They want to own the libs. They want the clips. Okay, and. So, and, and, and they'll send me notes, stuff like, he already said they're going to be a domestic terror group. What do you want him to do? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't Take know. Take some action. Maybe. What do you do with domestic terrorists? Shoot them. I mean, that's one thing you can do. Arrest them is another, right? You see, I'm in a hanging in the public square I'm, kind of I'm, mood. I'm down to clown. So I'm, I'm second. I, I, I approve. Yes. Short of that, yeah. I don't know if I can be satiated. I, they're, they're, so... I'm going to sell. Uh, wait, what do I... No, I, I have to buy that it's not going to be substituted enough. It, punches will be pulled. They won't realize that we are in the middle of a civil war. And so it's still going to be concessions and going back to normalcy and some garbage like that will be in some level of denial. So it won't be enough and it won't be substantive. So I'm buying. All right, Jason. Hold on, I'm not giving my answer yet. Oh, that's right. I... I Here's why I wanted you to go first. Okay. Because I, I, I desperately want us cause it's, it's, it's sell, right? That they won't sell do, if sell, if you think that they are going to do something, I, I desperately want to sell. Yeah, I desperately do. Of course. I desperately do. But, but this is what's holding me back. One of the rationales we were given for why he went w w way overreacted and went along with the lockdowns was what? but went on in his native New York City, correct? Correct. Um, it was his age group. He's over 70. It was almost exclusively people over 70. There's always outliers, but from a stratified data perspective, it was largely people over the age of 70 and in New York City. Well, who's also over 70 and from New York City? Correct. Donald Trump is, right? Probably, you know, most of us around America don't know anybody who got this. He probably knows several people that did. Well, a couple of them actually tested positive in the White House, right? So um, we, one of the things trying to explain why did he go along, despite all the data that said we didn't have to do this, why did he go along with the wrecking of, of his own economy? 
his own resume builder. And one of the rationales we came up with is this was his native New York City and it hit home to him, right? Doesn't that, why doesn't that apply here? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm struggling with. Like, like why wasn't, why wasn't the U.S. military in Times Square last night? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. all, especially yeah. after the governor said de Blasio is a failure, a disgrace. What went yeah. on, the lack of safety was a disgrace. I, I mean, I, I would think that if there was any place, just as we went through with this virus, if there was any place at all where he would be inclined because it hits home to him that he would act, what, what, why wouldn't it be there? And I don't, I don't understand it. I don't. To me, because these these aren't these aren't reconcilable truths. It's not reconcilable that he wrecked the economy in a whole bunch of states that are going to vote for him that want to vote for him, because and we're rationalizing it with well, it's because he was concerned about what happened in New York City. It hit home to him, and that's where he's from. I can buy that. I can buy that, right? But I can't buy it with. So he just turns the TV on at night in the White House and just watches his own city just burn into anarchy. And he's like, boy, that sucks. Wish somebody would do something about that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make any sense to you? You just described Trump's whole presidency, not just these two. Yeah, it's frustrating. So, I mean, he gave the talk that he should have given three days before he did. He gave that talk on Monday, right? We've had two more nights of this. And and, yeah. and and to defend him, since he threatened it, it has not been as systemic. Like here in Des Moines, we've been, you know, we've been doing curfews and stuff, and they've been they it's it's not since he threatened it, it has not been as systemic as it was before he threatened it. That's fair, right? That's that's that is somewhat fair, right? I'm not sure. I just saw the video of that 77 year old black man working as a cop getting shot in cold blood and on the I sidewalk. Know. So I, man, I, I'm, I know. I'm not giving any benefit. I know that I know what you're trying to do. Uh, yeah, but but it, but but New York City is not part of that systemic. It is only it's up to the ante there, right? So I don't I can't reconcile why he overreacted to the virus because of what it was doing to his hometown, but he's not going to overreact to these riots because of what it's doing to his hometown. That doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe some of you have an answer, and you know me by now. You can save me your. Get off of Trump. That, 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 I don't care about any of that. I don't. Find another show. I, I'd, I'd rather be unemployed, frankly, than try to please people like you. That's why I don't even try. I'm looking for a real adult conversation here. Help me to understand why we overreacted to the virus because it was his hometown, but we're not sending in the ability to squash this in 10 minutes in his hometown. I don't understand that. You're not even giving us the 50-50 coin flip, for God's sake. Right. And, and a fair question to ask me, hey, Steve, you've got friends in the White House. Why don't you ask him? I had not even considered this until I saw this proposition. This proposition is what prompted me to consider this line of reasoning. So when we go off the air here, I'm going to send a couple of texts to some of my friends in the White House and ask that question. Trust me. Okay. But for right now, I have to sell because, or I have to buy, buy. Yeah. because I don't see it. The, the toughest action I've seen was walking across the street to that church. And I thought it was a nice gesture. I was a, totally in favor with it. But here's the problem now. We're going into, into night three. And the, if, if, you don't, if you threaten but then don't answer, those folks are going to go back to calling your bluff again. Jason says the gun industry will see record profits despite the depression of the economy due to COVID lockdowns and riots. I think you're already Bye. saying that. Yeah. I mean, that's... With all due respect, Jason, I mean, that's that's like saying, I I, I think when they open movie theaters, Steve Dace is going to go back. I went back the first weekend. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Um, no, that's. Easy buy. Yeah, that's an easy buy. Yep. That's an automatic. No pun intended. Uh, uh, I see what you see did, what there. did there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chia Jesus, Matthew 715 says, deploying the National Guard will only temporarily flatten the curve of anarchist destruction. The second wave is already scheduled for October and November. Oh, I agree with that because I think yeah. this whole thing is coordinated. Yeah. This is, for those of us old enough to live through the Rodney King uh, riots, um, a lot of that was spontaneous combustion in the cauldron of LA and it did spill over into other communities, but it was largely relegated to that one. I think I think this is absolutely coordinated. I think it's an insurrection. And 
I think it's coordinated for if he wins re-election to burn baby burn the, in November, just the same. So bye. That's but that's 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 why this must be mercilessly put down. Emphasis on mercilessly. Donald Trump cannot lose the election because he put this down too mercilessly. I promise you he can't. Because anybody, anybody who's like, wow, there's just too much, too many dead Antifa insurgents in the streets, weren't ever going to vote for him anyway. It was never going to happen anyway. He can only lose the election because he wasn't merciless enough. No one, there's no one, no one who would think a nanosecond about voting for Donald Trump this fall. That punk white kid whose parents escorted him to the jail in Tennessee yesterday. If you saw him get demasked by a member of the U.S. military and beaten to a pulp right there on the street, no one, no one who's offended by that was ever going to vote for Trump anyway. He can't lose on that argument. He cannot be too tough on these people. He can't be. He can't be. He can only lose by being too soft, which is what he has been. Todd Saffel says police unions, internal affairs and leadership who cover for bad cops with multiple complaints should be charged as accessories when those cops continue to use excessive force. I love this and yeah. I'm all in. Yep. Absolutely. Perfect. I, I love it, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. To me, more accountability and you get a cell and you get a cell and you get a cell. Yep. I'm, I'm all for it, man. Um, you, you know what? We let 67,000 people out of prison for COVID. I'm sure none of them ended up in these mobs and riding around America. I'm sure, right? I'm sure they all found a, a safe space to social distance. But that also means now we've got 67,000 more spaces available to us. I'm happy filling them with all of the agents. You guys are worried about the deep state. I'm more concerned about what Todd's going after, the failed state. I'm, I, I want every, I'm fine putting every bureaucrat and every agent of the failed state in a cell that used to belong to a COVID-19 criminal. Fine with it. By the way, Steve, did you read White, uh, brown, red and black. I don't yellow, I don't care. Okay? Pink hair, I don't care. I don't care. I am fine with imprisoning them all. Yes. I'm sorry, Todd, go ahead. No, no, no. By, by the way, did you happen to read the uh, Des Moines Register's very strongly worded editorial? Uh, I think you know the answer to that telling question. The, yeah. Telling the police that they must leave their journalists alone. Uh, Could have used that 12 years uh, ago. That is nice. Yeah. Super happy, fun times. Journalist, journalist lives matter. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Except, sometimes. <laughs> yes. Except when they're... First name is Todd, and their uh, last name rhymes with Lurzen. Uh, Bacon says, King George was a tyrant. The Articles of Confederation were impotent. The Constitution was a distinction between both, which is why we're unable to follow it, because we cannot draw distinctions. That's actually good analysis. It's, it's Bradley, right? Bradley, yeah. It's, you're, it's incomplete, though, in my opinion. I mean, you, you could disagree with my opinion, but I think you have got to define why we can't follow these distinctions. We don't care. And, well, and, and <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to do better. Why we don't care. The Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. We can't follow it if we're not those things. Okay, we can't govern it. ourselves because on ourselves, we're bad. We're sinners. On our own, we're bad. On our own, we're bad. Okay. And even often the good things we do on our own are often to get attention from other people, right? It's Justin Timberlake from his own Elysium somewhere in, in, in the Hollywood Hills, you know, getting on his $1,500, uh, you know, what Apple phone are they on now? The 28? I don't yeah. even know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting on his new $1,500 just released Apple smartphone. Okay. To, to remote uh, pay for the, the bail. The release of prisoners. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When and on, I, I, and I, on that day, many will come to me saying, <laughs> Lord, Lord, I changed my profile picture right, and bailed right. rioters out of jail. Right. I, and I, because I can promise you, Justin Timberlake ain't been around any black people except in a recording studio or on a damn movie set. I can promise you that. All right. I can promise you that. So, uh, but why do that? I, I get notice, I get acclaim. Uh, on our own, we can't do distinctions and altruism as a species. We cannot. We can't do it. That's the long arc of human history. We have tried freedom and liberty. We've never been able to do it. That's why this in this country is barely 240 years old, man. That is a fart in the long arc of, of the thousands of years of human history. That is just one lifted butt cheek squeezed off. Okay, that's all 240 years is. That's all that it is. 
And this is the longest, exp- the longest running experiment in human history is one lifted butt cheek and a fart. And this is it. Why? Because we did something other attempts at this didn't do. Our rights come from God. We're all accountable to him. Even the people in power are, in count- are just as accountable to him as are the people that they're governing. That was the secret sauce. And that's gone now. So, so we can't draw the, you're right. But I think, you, I think you've treated, you're, you've, I diagnosed the symptoms. The disease is our own sinfulness. It makes us incapable of doing what, what we need to do. And what you articulated were the symptoms of that, I believe. Well done. Yeah, uh, Jacob Arthur says Trump is a master marketer and knows his base, but going to St. John's for a Bible pick when his spiritual advisor is Paula White. Come on, man. Uh, Sal, uh, uh, Sal. I, I'm holding. I'm sal- uh, Here's why. One of the absolute dumbest debates of my career has been over this, and I just refuse to participate. I, I mean, I don't think anybody has any credibility. Nobody does. I think people that are fine with it are fine with it because Trump did it, weren't fine with it when Bill Clinton did it in the 90s when he was waving Bibles around during the Monica Lewinsky fiasco and people that are upset with it. We've been, we, there's a long and undistinguished tradition of people in power in politics in America using the Bible as a prop, all right? So now you're just upset with it because it's orange man bad. I, I don't think, I think y- 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 all go to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Everybody with a take on this is completely hypocritical. I refuse to participate, hold. I'll take the beating for Sal, it. Sal, Jacob's an awesome follower of ours, but the only mistake Trump made is that he didn't stop and open it up to Romans 1 and just start reading there and not stop. Not to mention most people, most Christians think Paula White is a Christian leader. <laughs> Hour two is next. And we're back with Hour 2, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio and podcast. I'm Steve Dace. If you haven't yet done so, please consider leaving us a five-star review wherever you podcast the show from, if you are a podcast listener. Thank you for that, by the way. But keep those five-star reviews coming. They definitely help us to grow the show. Not to mention, they show the uh, the mucky mucks here at the Blaze that at least somebody likes us. So please keep that going. And thank you to the thousands of you that have left us one of those five-star reviews already. 888 900 is the number. 888 900 3393 Steve at com is how you can email us. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Steve Dace Show. Now, be honest. Did you do the whole, did you suffer from the whole quarantine 15 thing that went around the country with the lockdowns? Well, the good news is it's June. Summer is later this month. The warm weather is here. Why not now make this the new January, a chance to to build back your resolve, uh, to meet your weight loss and fitness goals this year? And Dr. Developed Riduzone can help because it's an excellent way to curb those cravings that can derail your discipline. Backed by two U.S. patents, Riduzone is the only FDA-accepted product that includes OEA, that is the naturally occurring molecule that helps you to feel full faster, burning stored fat, while then also reducing your caloric intake. And right now you can get a great deal on Riduzone. Now you can only get it on our website, Riduzone.com, R-I-D-U-Z-O-N-E. Again, that's R-I-D-U-Z-O-N-E. That's how Riduzone is spelled. If you go to Riduzone.com right now and use my name, Steve, as the promo code, you're going to save up to 65% off your order plus free shipping. Up to 65% off plus free shipping by using the promo code Steve at Riduzone.com. Before we get back to buy, sell, or hold, we're already angry, right? Oh, yeah. Are you, are you, all three of us are angry to some extent here yes. today? Are you ready to be more so? No. Gotta be. This is from Eric Schmidt. Eric Schmidt is the attorney general of the state of Missouri. He's Missouri's attorney general. And just a little bit ago, He tweeted the following, and I quote, In a stunning development, our office has learned that every single one of the St. Louis looters and rioters that were arrested were released back onto the streets by local prosecutor, Kim Gardner. Tar and feather. See, I'm just going to tell you, maybe my theology is wrong. I don't believe God brings a nation healing that does that. I don't. I don't. That's he demands, judgment you're talking he, yes, about? Yes, he demands justice. Demands justice. 
I agree that he demands justice for the likes of George Floyd. I agree with that. He demands justice for the likes of those whose businesses and properties, whose livelihoods, whose lives, their ability to feed their family, send their kids to college, everything they've poured into those experiences demands justice for that too. The law of God says, hey, if a poor man steals from you because he is hungry, don't be mad at him. But he still must pay back restitution for what he has taken. Meaning that because you're hungry, you still don't get to steal. No, you don't. You don't get to take something from somebody else because you perceive an injustice or a need. You are not permitted to do that. I don't believe you're going to see any healing without justice. Real justice. Not the fake virtue signaling social justice kind. Real, the real stuff. Kim Gardner ought to be in prison herself or tarred and feathered or both. I would be okay with either and made an example out of. I don't think you're going to see healing. You can get together with all your white friends and all your suburban mega churches all you want. And I mean, you can really squint your eyes and you can grunt. Please, Jesus, bring us the healing. The Jesus that took the switch for you, that took the nails for you? No, I don't think he's answering that prayer. The one that when he comes back, it's in a robe dipped in blood with a tat that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords and a sword. No, I don't, no, I'm, no, no, no. Don't give you guys much time for your sentimentality. You want healing, show it. One is a sentiment. The other is real. One of my children talks back to their mama. Causes division in my home. I've told women for years, the number one thing every man wants in his home is peace in his home. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. I mean, men will sacrifice things that they think are vitally important to them. Sex, a meal, a th th the kinds of things that drive men, that fuel men, they will give up for peace in their home. They, they have to, I mean, a man, need, he needs that more than anything else. I want peace in my home. But I can't have peace in my home if I just restore the children and, and look at my wife and say, hey, there's got to be unity here. No, no, she has been, uh, she's been abused. She demands and requires and deserves justice. And that justice is, I'm going to stick my foot in my beloved, adorable kid's backsides. That's going to be my justice. So that this doesn't happen again. And if it does, I'm going to stick both feet up there. Just to make sure I made the point. Then, then when there's been justice, now, now we can have some healing. When everybody understands what they did was wrong and what the, what, what, what the cost for it is, and they recognize that now, and my wife, her, the respect she deserves from her children has been avenged, then we can talk about going to Adventureland, going to the ball game. But no, 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 no. We're not doing that until there's been justice. It's got to be justice. Won't be any healing at least not any real one, without justice. If you bandage a wound while it's infected and you don't treat the infection, all you did was just put a cover over an infected wound. That's all that you did. That's not healing. The infection has to be confronted and treated. Then you bandage it. You don't put the neosporin on the outside of the bandage. You put it right there on the wound. That's where you put it. Your mama didn't just, when you fell off your bike again for your 47th scrape, your mama didn't just grab the hydrogen peroxide and just launch it into the air and say, healing. No, man, she emptied a vat of that stuff on that cut. <laughs> At least my mama did. I don't know what, how yours, man, I, I thought, I thought her hydrogen peroxide was a friggin' food group when I was a kid. I took so much of that stuff, but there had to be healing. Healing requires justice, though. Confrontation, tension, friction. That's where, that's where the healing comes from.
You have a tumor in your body. How do they get it out? How do they get it out? They have to take a real sharp object and they have to cut into you, right? Yes. Can they just pronounce healing? Is that how the doctor works? No. Virtue signal it away, yeah, yeah, Steve. Yes, I, I, I tweeted tumor out. Uh, the Tuesday's hashtag tumor out. And by nobody going on their Facebook pages, tumors go away. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. No, you, you want a doctor with a very sharp instrument that knows how to cut into you. And the pain of the removal of that tumor is so overwhelming, they got to put you under anest anesthesia. Otherwise, you might just collapse from that. From that pain. That's what is required here. More buy, seller, hold, Aaron. We'll go on to Jukari, who says, if Trump signed an executive order saying anyone convicted of any crime related to the riots will lose any and all federal money, including welfare, student loans, and unemployment, it would significantly reduce the number of rioters. Buy. Buy. I, I, again, we're going to debate over significance. Okay. I like where I, he's going. But I like where you're going, so I'm going to buy. Now, in three seconds, maybe less. Some federal judge from the 666th District of Babylon is going to say, you can't do that, and I get to put a nationwide injunction, because even though you didn't vote me into office, I am your new dictator now. And Trump needs to, um, you know, I mean, he needs to send a clear signal to that judge that that cannot occur, and that he has no intentions of uh, obeying that edict. Okay? But... I like where you're going, so I'll buy. Yeah. Where you're going is you have to de incentivize lawlessness, right? It's because I do agree, it's not just cracking down. That, that's the start. But I, you have to show that there's not a market for this in the future. There's, it's, it's pointless to pursue. That's why, I, that's why I keep saying we cannot have an honest conversation about race, which I'm totally fine having. We, we, but we will, not, we will not have it with a gun to our head. We will not incentivize that this is how you extract concessions or mediation from us. No, we will not negotiate with terrorists, either foreign or domestic. Put down the insurgency first, and then we may have your conversation if you would like. This is true, but it's been true for a long time. We just had this conversation about uh, lockdown and Governor Karen and coronavirus, about what, uh, what uh, hands can Trump play. Well, he, we knew, we said this, I don't know, like a month and a half ago, he can control funding. That was true before we heard of coronavirus. That was true with sanctuary cities. This strength is always there. This tool is always there. It's just a matter, do you have the strength to wield it? And there's clearly uh, no Captain Americas who are noble enough to wield Thor's hammer in this nation on a regular basis. AU Tiger 89 says the rioters aren't Joker, they're Ben. With no parenthetical information, so that's up to you. No. No, I'm not, I don't no, have to I, make that. That's no. a false choice. I, I, it's I, I it's mean, both I, I get where I get where you're going with that. Well... I, I, which rioters? If you want to tell me Antifa's bane, I would agree with that. Okay? That, that the chaos is to set the stage for their power base, right? Okay? But I, I don't think, I think Antifa is not the core of the rioting and the looting. I think they've, I think they've, and we're going to have a lot on Antifa on tomorrow's show, by the way. But I, but what they do a great job of is aggravating grievances, instigating them as a means to an end. I think the spirit of Joker is actually what's driving the, the spirit of Joker is what's driving a lot of the looting and rioting you're saying. So I, I will sell, but I get where you're going with that. They're both in there. There's no reason to choose. Uh, Eric Niklik says, our major cities being literally set on fire right now at the beginning of Pride Month is a level of divine trolling on par with the Lone Cross surviving the Notre Dame fire. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll buy only that. I, I, I hope that this is divine trolling, i.e. God's judgment on some. I hope, because if it isn't, Dear God, how much worse is it going to get? I'm, I'm, 
I'm genuinely hoping that, that that's what I'm hanging on to, that morsel within what you said. As long as it's God doing it. Thank you, because that means the kind of justice that is perhaps beyond all understanding is there. That's my prayer. That's why I'm on my knees. I'm going to sell, but the reason I'm going to sell is not necessarily because I don't agree with where you're going. I don't know if you're right or not, but I, I, I'm, I'm 100% confident that that cross at Notre Dame Cathedral was. I'm 100%. I'd bet my life on it, on that. So that's why I'm going to sell. Next is Aaron Rialli, who says, at some point in the not-so-distant future, we'll see at least one major Christian denomination stop ending prayers with amen, opting for the more progressive and gender-affirming a they slash a them. <laughs> Bye, God. God bless you for all your stupid Star Wars takes, Aaron. Just <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Have you guys seen, I don't know who this celebrity is, this video, where now she's going off about animal lives matter. Have you seen this? Is this another, do you want to be madder than you are and, now? And, and, and I only bring it up in this context because that is the mindset that would do something like this. And, and I hope that they do it with their hands in the air like this. Uh, like the cult we saw in Aaron's montage, so I will buy. I bought already. Yep. You bought, you bought instantly, man. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you bought it's that as a penny stock. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Gregory says, if the presidential election were held on July 4th, Donald Trump would get obliterated by Joe Biden, losing 35 or more of the 50 states. Uh, I will sell only because we're not even aging in dog years right now. We're aging in gnat years. Like we're going through larvae cycles in an hour right now. Okay. So um, July 4th, I know that is literally in 10 years. <laughs> okay. Um, I, w but if you had, if you had said if the election were today, he'd lose 35 States. I agree with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a perfect storm for Joe Biden. He doesn't have to campaign every day. Doesn't have to. I mean, the guy can't pull off 10 minute interviews on MSNBC. So he doesn't have to, he has to do no long form exposure of himself. There's been no debates where he's got to stand up there for two hours in front of a hundred some odd million people. There's 40 million people out of work. No one's getting reelected guys. Mark my words. No one's getting reelected with 40 million people unemployed. Not in an unrigged election anyway. They're not. Okay. Um, and then, and then the riots are going on. If the election were today, he would get trounced. I agree with you, but it's not today. And, and July 4th, <laughs> you know, if, if you had told me the day we came in here and Neil Ferguson admitted his entire survey, that was, that was like the second, like the second week of this, that his, that his survey was trash. I think if I recall back now, I was like, guys, I think we just won this, right? Was I saying that at the time? Yeah. And then like a week later, Donald Trump's like, uh, we're, I think we need to do this another 30 days because Anthony Fauci and Debbie Burks told me so. And then you almost quit the show. Yeah, I, mean, I literally wanted to quit my job. I, I mean, I, I came in that day unsure that I could do this for a living anymore. Like I just, because I, I have to believe in what I'm doing, guys. I just do. If I don't, I can't do this, man. I tried, I've tried kicking the Detroit Lions in the curb. I tried adopting them when they had the Rams, when they had Kurt Warner, a local Iowa guy. I've met him several times in my old haunt as a sports writer. He's the real deal. You know, they're somewhat local, De Des Moines to St. Louis. I tried, man, it lasted like a week and I was right back on the, you know, at the hookah bar for the, with the Detroit Lions logo on it. Okay, taking drags. So I, I, if, I have to believe in it. If I don't believe in it, I can't do this. And I'm just like, if, if we're just going to be this bad and it's so futile, then what was the point in continuing on? So there was a, there, there was literally a 24 hour period there where I considered, I mean, we even talked about it. I may have to quit, but thankfully my batteries got recharged and you know who recharged them is you guys did. Because I thought the minute that Trump got skittish on this, a bunch of you were going to be like, well, we got to back Trump. So let's just all agree that it's the stand now. And I'm like, I can't relitigate that. I can't go through what I did in the 2016 election ever again. I did it once. I can't ever do it again. And I'm just not, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm older now. I don't have the urine and vinegar in me. I don't, I don't have, 
the swim account I used to have. I just can't come in here and go to war against the very people I love and are in my own audience every day. I did it once during an election. I can't do it again. I won't do it again. I won't. I just, I, I don't, I don't have it in me to do it again. You just need to know that up front. I don't. And that's why I'm like, if this is where this is going to go, where the virus is now the 2016 election all over again, I'm not doing those shows anymore. And the fact that a lot of you were still like, no, I'm calling BS on this, that recharged my battery and gave me the energy to go forward. And then I think we got even better after that. All right. But um, I have to believe in it. I have to. Didn't I? Did I already answer? Uh, yeah, you might have already. Yes. So uh, Goodfella49 says, riots will eventually move from commercial areas into residential areas, and that's when it will all hit the fan. If that happens, I'm not convinced that it will. There's been They've been threatening all this week they were going to do it, and they haven't really done it yet. And see... Can I take a minute to explain what I think is really happening here? You should. Okay. Just like with the virus, there were legitimate fears with the virus. And I in, and even though I wholeheartedly endorse the talking point that coronavirus on a macro level is just a very bad flu, okay? That doesn't mean though, as I've told you before, we must draw an important distinction here. On a macro level, it may be a very bad flu and not require the lockdowns that we're still suffering from. But that doesn't mean on a micro individual level, it, it hits people the same as the flu. Okay. If you're morbidly obese, if you have diabetes, if you have autoimmune, your doctor is not telling you to stay home from work during the flu season. Your doctor is not telling you, you know, um, don't go around your grandparents. This, this hits individual people differently, but we could have addressed those issues without this ham fisted doomsday lockdown. Your doctor could have just told you, Hey, I'll give you a note, work from home for about a month or two if you could. Could have just done that. We didn't need to shut America down, all right? Um, an important distinction needs to be drawn here too. I, I do think we cannot ignore that black uh, being black in America means you are more likely to disproportionately suffer numerous things in our society than other groups are. Now, I don't believe the, that because th there was a U.S. there was a slave ship that arrived in the United States before you know 150 years before there was a U.S. in 1619. That's why that's still happening in the year 2020. I don't believe that. Okay. I also though don't believe that we can just chalk this all up to individual choices and and we have to ask ourselves why. And I'm totally fine having that conversation. I can, go, I can go out here in the hallway, grab a guy named Chuck Hurley. He put together the group of people that founded here in our building. He put together the group of people that founded the first inner city Christian school in Des Moines history. And he'll tell you, how, why did he do it? Because one day I got him together with a group of people, black pastors, and I hate that expression, but we go with it because that, that's how people know what I'm talking about. I got those people together one day and I challenged the white guys in the room, hey, we don't want affirmative action. We don't want government. We don't want all these ham-fisted solutions. What are we in the church doing so that Sunday morning is not the most segregated time in America every week? What are we doing? I didn't tell them, hey, go out and raise the money for a Christian school or anything like that. But that conversation, that challenge built those relationships, broke down, helped break down those walls and led to what founded that school. To whom much is given, much is required. So I think it's far more complicated than it, it's all government or there's no such thing as systemic racism. I, I just think it's a lot more complicated than that. And even if I didn't agree with that, some of my brothers and sisters who look differently to me think that way. So I need to listen to them. It doesn't mean I have to agree with them. I often did not. I often sit in these meetings and not agree. But I at least listened. Why? Because I, I wanted to show I cared. That I'm not here to win an argument with you. I want to build a relationship. A rapport. I think we cannot lose sight of that while what's going on over here is happening. 
Because what's going on over here doesn't care about any of that. I don't believe wants any of that healing, wants any of those walls broken down, which is why they're not marching in front of Planned Parenthood, which is why they're not trying to build coalitions peacefully in inner cities with all the black on black violence, which is why they're not protesting at every inner city school board with its 90 percent lack of academic proficiency on math and reading everywhere in America. That's why they're not doing that. But I also think that we cannot successfully call that out unless we show we care about those things and actually have some solutions to address them. Otherwise, we're doing the right wing version of virtue signaling. So just like I told you all along, sanitize your homes, take that seriously. I told you two weeks ago, don't believe the CDC that fomites aren't a problem. They're wrong about that. Keep sanitizing your home. That's a problem. CDC came out the next week and said, yeah, we were wrong about that. I'm interested in what the truth is. I'm not interested in my own narrative. I'm not interested in my own agenda. My agenda is what is the truth. The truth is, this is a country that has a history with systemic racism. It wasn't founded on it wasn't the premise of the country as leftist iconoclast claim, but we cannot ignore this fact either. In fact, the debate over this systemic racism is why there was almost not a United States of America. If the, the, the issue of slavery threatened to be what stopped them from forging a constitution. The only way they could ultimately get there was to set it aside for another time. Even within that group, they were deeply divided over it. We can't ignore that. Now, I also don't think any of us are responsible for anything we didn't do. I've made that point too. See, there's layers of this, man, layers. And, and I've seen with my own eyes and heard with my own ears in these conversations, the only way to navigate these layers is for us to come now and reason together. For us to be each other's neighbors and have these conversations and, and have it feel like it's safe to say what we really think and that we're not going to instantly be judged as terrible. I instantly think you're a Marxist. I instantly think you're a racist. Groups like what's go that are like Black Lives Matter is doing what they're doing in the streets, they don't want those conversations, I believe. Because it's not Black Lives Matter. It's anarchy and Marxism matters. That's why it only matters. In, for Al Sharpton, the grift is what matters. That's why he cares about what some no-name producer on the Don Imus Don Imus show said 10 years ago about a women's basketball team you've never heard of. But has nothing to say about all those black kids suffering in all those dilapidated, ineffective, destructive inner city schools. It doesn't champion any form of choice or scholarship for them to get out of there. Because in the end, in politics, you're the hills you're willing to die on. So I want to make sure that we don't lose sight of the responsibility we have as human beings. Just like I want to make sure we don't lose sight of the fact there is such a thing as coronavirus. It has killed people. It does impact people differently than a flu virus does. Now, from a corporate public policy standpoint, it's not any different than the flu. And except for some different modified social distancing that maybe in hindsight it was a good idea not to play the NSA tournament in March, for example, indoors with all those people. Okay, except for some modifications, it did not, though, require the threatening of our way of life. Instead, sinister forces used it to grab power they've long wanted. And that's what's happening here, too, with George Floyd. That doesn't mean there aren't real issues here that have to be addressed, however. But you're not going to address them with these people because they're not after the real issue. Because George Floyd isn't the real issue. The anarchy is. The Marxism is. But you're never going to be able to separate these posers and grifters and fiends from the conversation we need to have unless you're willing to have that conversation. I can promise you I've seen that with my experience too. And I, I don't think we're going to be able to defeat these people, these 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 near to wells knuckle draggers in the arena of ideas unless we've got our own dialogue that we're willing to come to the table with that dialogue doesn't mean i i have to i have to bow the knee to white privilege 
That's a scam from the people we need to get rid of. But it's not just as simple as, hey, there's never any issues and there's never any problems. It's not that simple either. And as long as we want to continue to pretend with that, we're going to make it easier for thugs like Antifa and the thugs that are in our streets rioting and looting to be seen and deemed credible. It's similar to how we are losing young white males in conservatism to this alt-right nationalism and anti-Semitism. And we're losing them because one of the reasons why they don't believe real conservatism really wants to confront what's going on in the culture. And so this lie of alt-right anti-Semitic nationalism comes to them and says, hey, we'll do it. And they think that these guys, they're just misunderstood because they have balls. No, they're evil. They're racists and anti-Semites. But if the people who don't know better, if they're not willing to fight for what matters, you lose people to movements like this. And the same thing applies here. If we're not going to substantively address this, we're going to make it easier for these fakes and grifters and Marxists and anarchists to be deemed credible. Daniel Horowitz will join us next. Well, he made it. He's here after all. Our weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, is here to take us inside politics. It is good to have you back with us, my friend. How are you? Great to be with you, Steve. If one thing, who would have thought this time last week we would not be talking about the virus? Except I need to ask you about one story that, oh, has, no? that has come up just in the last couple of hours, okay? And I, I fell for it. I apologize. I said to my audience, hey, it wasn't a random sample, but a study of this size with that much data, you have to take it seriously. And it was this Lancet study uh, about, what was it 10,000 people? I want to say it was. Thousands. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was in the thousands on, on hydroxychloroquine. It might be larger than that, yeah. And that um, it, it caused life-threatening illnesses in several of them, right? Okay. It now appears... That entire study was a fraud. It was totally bogus. And the science editor of that study appears to be a science fiction writer. And I wonder, do you remember that first medium piece about the Imperial College survey that 40 million people read? Remember, I went and looked that guy up that night and I texted you and I said, have you looked this guy up? Who's the author of this? That everybody's sharing this guy's piece? And he... and. And he's a science fiction writer with an author page on Amazon. He has like no qualifications. He's like a screenplay writer. I almost wonder if it's the same guy, but we'll, maybe I don't know that we'll know. But this whole thing is a farce. Uh, the whole study's a scam. And I, I don't... I had, I had dinner with one of our mucky mucks, Tyler Carden, here at The Blaze a couple weeks ago when I was down in Dallas. And one of the things I said to him, the hardest part of my job right now as an analyst, I don't know what information to analyze. I don't know what's true, right? You are, you're in the same boat. So yep. tell me, are, how confident are you on a given day when you write, a, write an article or do a podcast for your audience that everything that you just put your blood, sweat, and tears into breaking down and analyzing for them isn't going to be debunked tomorrow, a week later, a month later? It's really making doing this job as hard as it's ever been for me. Steve, it's, this is the days of judging the judges. I mean, mm. that's what it is. Um, it's pure anarchy. It's anarchy not just in the streets but in the academic world. Um, it's not as hard as you made it out to be, and I think you know this, Steve. We talk about this a lot together, that the reason why you and I often get things right where so many smart people, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a military issue, which we both don't have military experience, whether it's a scientific or medical issue, we get it right where <clears throat> so many of these professionals their whole lives that were in this industry or those industries get it wrong is precisely because we're political guys. Because all of these issues, when you see a coalescing, a sudden incessant obsession about something, Social distancing, social distancing, mask, 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 hmm. racial injustice, racial injustice, racial injustice. You know it's wrong, okay? Because you know it's political, Steve. It's a political issue. It's not a scientific issue. It's not a criminology issue. It's not a military issue. You know where it's coming from. 
We just got to get the exact, you know, cross our T's, dot our I's to fully uh, debunk it. But we know where it's headed. So what I do is on any given day, I say the minimum that I know is true. I have an intuition. And I think you and I went through this journey throughout March and April where we knew so much more was true about the virus. That was a lie, but we couldn't pr quite prove it. So we held our fire until we could. And that was the evolution. And we could talk about it. A similar thing happening now with the whole crime issue. Um and policing and the riots, but that is the issue. I mean, common sense is very powerful, and when you start seeing things that just conflict with common sense, now, hydroxychloroquine is hard because that's really a medical issue, and you and I didn't get that much into that because it wasn't so much a public policy issue, but you start seeing a lot of cases, and even, so So at first, I wasn't comfortable talking about that issue, and I never did. And I don't think you you spoke about it much mm -hmm. either because that wasn't public policy. I never understood that. I, I never I never bought into let's root for Remsevir, which cost about fifteen hundred dollars a pill. I think let's root for that, but root against a drug that has been approved by the FDA since 1950, 1955 for human consumption and costs like a, a, a less than a dollar a pill. Uh, I never understood that aspect, but but I have no idea its efficacy medically or yeah, not. So yeah. So that's the difference between you and I and a doctor. We could study the fact pattern, which we do on every issue. Where did it? Where did this come from? When did it happen? Where is this headed? Who are the motivations? Data analysis, what we're seeing, what we're not seeing. And we put together an entire piece of the puzzle, filled out the full puzzle, and it worked out good. But when you're talking about treatment of a patient, they come in with certain signs. What do you treat them with? I don't know. But then I did know one thing about this. I had a doctor on my show that mentioned a very important point that is not a medical point. It's a political point, and it speaks to this. And he said, think about it this way. I have nothing against Gideon and that drug that they're producing. I don't know, but here's what we do know. We know that on the one hand with that drug, it might work, but we do know that there are tons of investors that every word that Fauci or anyone says is going to affect its market price there's politics, economics, business to be gained or lost behind it. Whereas what I did notice, again, I don't understand the medicine behind it, the science behind it, but I never heard of hydroxychloroquine. But what I did notice was there was no skin in the game. There was no iron in the fire. There was no dog in the race. Mm -hmm. It was a group of random grassroots doctors from dozens of different nations a drug that freaking costs five bucks, an anti-malaria drug, they just said worked. They just, I mean, there was nothing, there was nothing behind it like, hey, someone's going to get wealthy. There's some sort of political benefit. It was just a, a coalition of just groups of people, doctors, are like, hey, this thing works. I mean, you know, let's check it out. And it, it, it's just shocking how everything, there's nothing from weather to sports to science, there's nothing that's not politicized. And we saw the same thing in Germany. When this this guy put out the only study that was showing there was a significant or the same degree of a uh, transmission from child to adults as there are from adults to adults, and it turned out that was fabricated too. So, you know, in that case, we had the overwhelming majority say the opposite, and I think we just had the fact pattern of seeing that, you know, in school after school and place after place where they reopened, they weren't having a problem, and... I can't even fully to this day, I have a theory, but I can't explain the science of why there wouldn't be as much transmission. Mm -hmm. But Steve, the fact pattern shows it. Sure. Um, In fact, and, there's and uh, you, yeah. you and I were given, uh, were made privy last night to, at least as far as I know, the only antibody testing of children done in America. I, I don't even think they've even been included in any other antibody testing no. in America. And that's one fifth of our population are minors. So whenever you see, whenever you hear Daniel and I talk about how these serology exams, uh, uh, tests and, and, and studies of, of antibodies show lower the infection rate, lower the case fatality rate, keep in mind we're not including one fifth of our population in that because the children aren't included. So it's going down even more than the factors that uh, the serology, the antibody testing is showing. So last night we were we were made privy to the first one we know of, at least exclusively of children or including them in the U.S. It went on. It's it, it went on in New York City. Over 800 children, I believe it was Manhattan and Brooklyn, were the two boroughs that were looked at, and what and they came back. What was I think the number was 20 percent of those children in those two boroughs came back with antibodies. That's that's a startling number. 
Well, what, what that demonstrates is, again, that almost every kid, based on what the hospitalization data, if that many got it, almost all of them are asymptomatic, which, by the way, Steve, the biggest theory that I've heard and read and studied from the studies as to why kids don't transmit is not that kids don't transmit. There's nothing inherently different. It's just that whereas, let's say with adults, 50, 60 percent are asymptomatic. With kids, it's 99 percent. And asymptomatic seemingly contrary to what they were saying, do not transmit or most of the time don't transmit per the study in China, 465 cases. They didn't see a single asymptomatic one. That is the only logical explanation I've heard that kids not transmitting is just a redundant manifestation mm -hmm. of asymptomatic not transmitting, which is, again, was one of the major tools of quarantining everyone that fell down. Another big one I wouldn't have known is that the RO number, the rate of transmission from one person to another, one person um, giving a, on average one person the disease is an R1. They were thinking this is R3, R4. British, um, uh, the British government just came out with there in Britain. They think it's 0.5 if you take out hospitals and nursing homes, because the same way that the nursing homes created a lopsided IFR fatality rate that if you take well actually we include them in the point two or whatever if you take them out it's a decimal over um, but it's the same thing in the rate of transmission for most people it's actually point five the reason why you saw the two the three whatever it was from the hospitals and that's another way that the panic porn created a self fulfilling yeah. prophecy I mean, you're taking the people, people that are the most the most vulnerable and the most infectious you're putting them all together under one roof and yep. and then you're extrapolating that data yep. that as you said fact pattern to an to a population as a whole when the whole population doesn't uh, isn't of that age or isn't infected or doesn't have the same uh you know uh health uh, needs or or weaknesses that everybody in there does you know we're we're kind of back to everything we said at the beginning everything the diamond princess showed at the beginning we're kind of back to all of that stuff from the very beginning. So let's get let's get to the writing that's going on. Right before we had you come on, the state attorney general in Missouri said that the prosecutor in St. Louis, Kim Gordon, his office was alerted to the fact that she had released every one of the lighter, the, the, the looters and rioters that were arrested in her community uh, here in, in the last couple of days. Daniel, our, our founding fathers would have tarred and feathered any great politician for something like that. Steve, now you know why I'm so agitated, okay? I, I want your audience to understand this so they don't fall victim to this again. Again, we study fact patterns of politics. We know every tool in the woodshed of the left. It's the same principle on whatever the issue is. This is exactly like the virus. Every falsity latches onto a truth. They show you a picture. There are people dying of COVID, Steve. You can't deny it. 100,000, blaring, dying, dying. But what they do is, more than in the bias of what they report is the obfuscation of what they don't report. So you can't see a full picture. Things in life are imperfect. There's death, there's misery. Public policy is imperfect. You have overkill, underkill, um, too much policing, too little police. You could have a case. There's 375 million police interactions with the citizen every year. It's almost a miracle if you don't have cases of brutality, given just the amount of power that is that is accorded a police officer. Um, you're going to have it. You're going to have you're going to have a video. You could always find. And it's it's pretty astounding. You don't have that many. And I actually have a reason for it. You don't have that many of them, particularly with blacks. But all you need is one. And really, you could have for every one of those, there are a thousand examples of police using underwhelming or too tardy, meaning they're too late in using the force that they put themselves and the lives of civilians in danger. Um, five cops have been killed so far. One, or, um, I got David Dorn, David Underwood, Cody Halt, um, the guy in Vegas, I think, is on life support. And there was the one in Birmingham. It's not clear if it was from the riots. But again, a lot of times they're ambushed, but sometimes they see it coming. We had a case in Baltimore County recently where the a female cop was run over. And, and what I heard from people, because it didn't make sense, didn't she see it coming? She was young, healthy. How do you get run over? She It, it was a black youth, and she did not want to pull the trigger. For every one where someone may be trigger happy, and not necessarily because of race, there is no proof whatsoever that even in Minneapolis, as wrong as it appears to have been, it's police brutality. It's not racial injustice. It's not white supremacism. There's no indication 
um, that it, that had anything to do with the fact that the guy was black. But we take that re- we run with it when, in fact, in terms of the broad policy, the problem is on the other way that too often they use underwhelming uh, power. They put their lives in danger. They put the lives of others in danger too often. Too few criminals. I'm writing about another one. This happens every day. You know, Steve, I've written probably more articles. I'm not bragging, but more articles on crime than anyone out on the Web publishing articles today, probably on either side or any side of of the issue. I mean, I'm the only one one on this side of the issue. But when you're like me and you see day after day after day, I'm not even talking about drugs, but rape, assault, robbery, murder, 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 out on 5,000 bond. The fifth violation of of, of the bond, there's a case I'm dealing with. Okay, you get $5,000. You violated another time with a DUI. And then now and now this guy that I'm writing about it from Nebraska murdered an African American. And that's another thing. The biggest um, victims of the weak on crime policies that they are trying to push by using this. It's almost like the nursing homes. COVID, 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 nothing else matters. You know, the collateral damage, cancer patients, heart patients, 53% likely GDP and, loss. And, 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 and grandma died anyway. Yeah. Suicides. Oh, and then even on COVID, let's kill more people. Same thing here. You're going to kill all sorts of other people, all sorts of chaos, the rioters, the looters, everything. And even and black lives. And again, you know, it should be all lives. You know, why, why do we single out anyone? But that's your thing. Black lives like covid black lives. OK. Seventy four. Right. How many cases of these do we have over the last five years? OK, we have Gardner and we have Floyd. I can't think of others because all the unarmed shootings turned out to be justified. Um, if you look at them, I go through the the cases out of three, out of 375 million contacts a year and disproportionately among African-Americans, because that's where most of the violent crime is committed. That's a pretty do- doggone good track record. This case is about individual justice. There was no indication from day one that justice wouldn't be served. Indeed, he was indicted swiftly, unlike at least in Rodney King, where the riots were in reaction to an acquittal. There was no justice not served. The justice not being served is David Dorn. It's David Underwood. It's. It's all the cops injured. It's all the business owners that had their shops burnt down. It's the people dragged out of their cars now for being white and beaten. They're setting up checkpoints on interstate highways and the cops are letting them do it like 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 in Fallujah where with, with, with the Sunni militias and they pull people out of their cars. Who is getting justice? Nobody. But let me tell you something, Steve, your observation out of Missouri, that's a microcosm of what we see every doggone day. Hundreds of thousands of victims of crime of all races, all races that never, ever see the justice that the Floyd family is almost certainly likely to get, hopefully. But, you know, here's the thing. Ultimately, ultimately, 7,400 black victims of homicide a year, 90 percent of them committed by other African-Americans. This is what you see in Chicago every weekend, in St. Louis every weekend. Black lives, indeed, do not matter. Only the ones that can be used as a political football. Hmm. Powerful stuff, my friend. Glad we got you on. See you next week. God bless. Take Take care. care. God bless. We're going to stick around and do some overtime for our Blaze TV subscribers. For the rest of you, that's blazetv.com slash dace if you want to subscribe or watch today's overtime. For the rest of you, back at it again tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck, John 317.